Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. John McCain just tried to undermine Trump for the last time, realized big mistake too late. There are two John McCains. One is the fictional, well-curated political image of a straight-talking, principled maverick war hero who disdains politics and partisanship in favor of doing he believes is the right thing. The other John McCain that lives in a little place called reality, is a warmongering political hack that seemingly parrots whatever media talking point is expedient at the moment, often to the detriment of the American people. As they often do, the media attempts to whitewash and gloss over unfavorable attributes if the person is deemed to be useful in pushing the narrative of the moment or magnifying them as the case may be often at the expense of accuracy and truth. For some, it is easy to see why pundits and talking heads would go easy on or even praise McCain, a longtime senator from Arizona recently diagnosed with brain CR and also suffered as a prisoner of war for five years. However, as is often said, facts do not care about feelings and accuracy matters. As many have noted throughout the years of McCain's lengthy political career, it has been marked by jarring flip-flops and malleable principles. He was opposed to former President George W. Bush's NSA wiretap program before he supported it. He defended the estate tax before he harshly criticized it. He vaguely opposed torture but undermined legislative efforts to stop it. He claimed opposition to the current head of the CIA-Gina Haspel during the nomination process, yet supported the former head of the CIA-John Brennan for the exact same policies. He embraced Social Security privatization before saying otherwise, twice. Some simply say that positions evolve over time, and while that is true, most career politicians do not carefully craft an image based on being principled and honest merely to shift like the sand with regards to the cause of the moment in a seemingly arbitrary fashion. In the age of President Donald Trump and the current media outrage of the moment, the U.S.-Russia summit in Helsinki, McCain offered scathing commentary calling it a tragic mistake and faulted President Trump for naivete and egotism in meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Yet it is important to note McCain's past history of warmongering and pandering to popular political opinion in an age when it seems many of the Washington political despots of both parties seem to be very willing, even eager to ouster a duly elected president over merely calling for peace. In an article for The Nation dated July 11, the internationally renowned U.S.-Russia relations expert Stephen F. Cohen warned of possible attempts by peace-hating Beltway stalwarts to sabotage the Helsinki peace talks between Presidents Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin that is scheduled for this coming Monday. There is a long history of sabotaging or attempting to sabotage summits and other détente-like initiatives, wrote Cohen. Indeed, a few such attempts have been evident in recent months and more may lie ahead. And now here comes McCain again lambasting President Trump in a full statement describing President Trump's remarks during the press conference as pathetic, disgraceful, and painful to observe, a recent low point in the history of the American presidency. McCain's statement reads as follows Tash. Today's press conference in Helsinki was one of the most disgraceful performances by an American president in memory. The damage inflicted by President Trump's naivete, egotism, false equivalence, and sympathy for autocrats is difficult to calculate. But it is clear that the summit in Helsinki was a tragic mistake. President Trump proved not only unable but unwilling to stand up to Putin. He and Putin seem to be speaking from the same script as the president made a conscious choice to defend a tyrant against the fair questions of a free press and to grant Putin an uncontested platform to spew propaganda and lies to the world. It is tempting to describe the press conference as a pathetic rout as an illustration of the perils of under-preparation and inexperience. But these were not the errant tweets of a novice politician. These were the deliberate choices of a president who seems determined to realize his delusions of a warm relationship with Putin's regime without any regard for the true nature of his rule, his violent disregard for the sovereignty of his neighbors, his complicity in the slaughter of the Syrian people, his violation of international treaties, and his assault on democratic institutions throughout the world. Coming close on the heels of President Trump's bombastic and erratic conduct towards our closest friends and allies in Brussels and Britain, today's press conference marks a recent low point in the history of the American presidency. That the president was attended in Helsinki by a team of competent and patriotic advisers makes his blunders and capitulations all the more painful and inexplicable. No prior president has ever abased himself more abjectly before a tyrant. Not only did President Trump fail to speak the truth about an adversary, but speaking for America to the world, our president failed to defend all that makes us who we are, a republic of free people dedicated to the cause of liberty at home and abroad. American presidents must be the champions of that cause if it is to succeed. Americans are waiting and hoping for President Trump to embrace that sacred responsibility. 
one can only hope they are not waiting totally in vain. So once again the Russian narrative advances and President Trump continues to be pressured by all of his political enemies, both in Washington and in the media, to escalate tensions both at home and abroad. Yet Trump's base continues to remain strong, using every avenue available to speak out against this narrative. Reminding the American people of incidents like when Beijing, not Moscow, hacked and stole some 20 million sensitive personnel files on former President Obama's own employees. And Obama not only did nothing but continued to cultivate and facilitate a relationship with the communist country. Yet all we hear is Russia Russia Russia. The 1980s called, I think they want their foreign policy back. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click, like, and subscribe. Thank you.